Hello ladies and gentlemen, today I will be talking about Loving Vincent. Loving Vincent is a new milestone in cinematic filmmaking. It is the first ever animated film to be done completely in oil painting. This film follows a young man who has been given the task to deliver Vincent van Gogh's final message. But along the way he decides to do some investigation to figure out what happened in Vincent van Gogh's last days on Earth. And he gets information from a few witnesses who saw Vincent in his final days. Now, of course, the first thing I have to praise with this movie is its animation. I was very worried going to this when I heard it was uh, completely done off oil painting because I was afraid that the animation was going to be too busy. That there would be so much stuff going on that I wouldn't be able to take in anything. Well, I was completely wrong about that. The animators and the creators and artistic directors did such an amazing job at making sure every detail of the actors, setting, everything is captured beautifully through the animation. The moments that really re resonated with me when I was watching it were the moments where we see light come into the room and change the setting itself. And my favorite moments are two parts. The moments when the movie when it rains and how the rain affects surfaces and affects uh, the people as well. But my favorite use of the animation and of the artistry is actually when we see the flashback stories that we are told. They are in the style, and I kind of figured this when I saw the film, but then it was really cool to be confirmed that it's in the style of those old photographs that you see of, of, of painters, of uh, elected officials back in, the, back in the day. It's in that style, and it gives it a very little like a, like a vision sequence. It's like dream sequences being shown to us. And seeing that consistently through the film, that attention to detail, I could feel the passion coming off of the artist's fingertips as they were painting this film. It is an amazing looking movie. What I was really impressed to see as well were the performances in this movie. No one seemed to be phoning it in. There was an incredible amount of dedication and respect to presenting the material. And to bring an honest look at these witnesses who saw Vincent. It, I don't know if it's factually correct or anything, but what was really cool is I could believe those people. I was invested in what they were saying, and I cared about how they felt about Vincent. They all have different opinions of Vincent. They all have different encounters with him and different reasons to believe uh, who he was as a person. And it doesn't make us, you know, we don't just pick one side and say, oh yes, that this is how he was. Yes, this is how he was. We see him as a fanatic, we see him as a passionate artist, we see him as an egotist, and we see him as a, just a heartfelt person. We see him as someone who is emotionally driven, uh, very intelligent, but also very erratic. It was really interesting to see that it wasn't a movie that was praising Vincent van Gogh. It was trying to capture his spirit. Now, I didn't really have a problem at all with how this film was presented, with a minor exception to one little structural thing. But my biggest issue comes from the protagonist as well, the young man that we follow. First, I'll talk about the structural issue. There is a lot going on in this movie from the artistry, uh, and it's not too busy, like I said, but because, because this isn't a very common art form in animation, I think it needs time to kind of like set in my, at least for me, had to give me a minute just to set in what I was taking in, the new the new style between the flashback uh, stories and the present time uh, Van Gogh paintings. There's one moment where it felt like there was only like three minutes between one flashback story, then we go to the present, and then another flashback story. It jumped very fast and I couldn't, the artwork just didn't sink into me. I'm just kind of like, whoa, wait a minute. Just let it set, and then we can move on. In regards to the main protagonist for this film, this is where the movie really doesn't work for me. He is a very boring protagonist to follow. And I say that in the ways of saying he's not a very active protagonist in terms of his motivations. I don't know why it's so important to him to go and find Vincent or, or figure out what happened to him to to 
I don't know why it's so important that he understands every single piece of the puzzle. All I really got from him at the end of the film was he's a drunkard, an angry drunkard, who wears yellow all the time. I just didn't connect with him. I connected more with the individuals who were telling their stories and not the person who was asking the questions, which I do think is a problem. A similar character in this respect is Jake Giddies from Chinatown. He's a character who also asks a lot of questions to get the full story, but he's an active protagonist. He has motivations. We know what kind of character he is, and he's someone that we want to grow, and he has an eventual arc throughout the film. It's just weird that in a movie that was taking so many risks through its expression and through its creativity and through its animation, that this was a very safe character to follow. But after thinking about this movie for a while, there was one question that came up for me about adaptation and representation. There's a lot of Van Gogh paintings that are shown to us in the frames of this film. And a lot of time when I look at Van Gogh's work, I don't know what it's saying. I don't know who these people are. I don't know what, what they're doing. But I can associate a feeling with them. Like there's an emotional experience when I look at the paintings. And when I look at them, I kind of like, you know, give my own ideas and my own interpretations. But in this film, those images are given an interpretation and given a context, a solid context. Like that, that is what it is. And now I just feel like if I look at those images again, like if I look at Starry Night, or if I look at The Sitting Man, I'm going to immediately associate with, oh, that's what it is. Not what I was perceiving before, not what I was thinking before. And my question is just, is that the right thing to do? Does that take away from an experience? Does that add a new experience? Does it broaden our mindset or does it shrink it? If you ever get a chance to see Loving Vincent, see it in a theater. This is how it should be experienced. It's like being inside of an oil painting. There's a few times where I felt separated from it, but for the most part, you're, you feel like you're in it. And I really hope that this new medium and new style of expression through animation becomes popular and becomes commonplace. And then we can look back at this film and say, that was the one that started it all. Well, ladies and gentlemen, those are my thoughts on Loving Vincent. Thank you so much for watching this video. Leave a comment down below. Tell me if you saw the film, what you thought of it. Like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, take care.